Here we're going to use a summary table of the different epidermal strata uh, and compare it to this drawing of the epidermal strata. Uh, a strata is a layer. Um, the stratosphere, for example, are the different layers uh, in the atmosphere. So there are five strata or five layers to the epidermis. And each of these layers is kind of known for something. So you can simplify a lot of this information and just learn each of the layers in their order. So this table goes from the deepest layer towards the more superficial layer. So it's kind of opposite the drawing. So the table starts with the stratum basal, but the stratum basal is this deepest layer here. So you have to make sure when you're going through the table, you're going up through the different layers of the epidermis, from the deep layer towards the superficial layer. The drawing is an artistic drawing um, where we see that there's a boundary between the epidermis and the dermis. So that is known as the basement membrane. So remember, all epithelial tissue are attached to a basement membrane, and then that basement membrane holds it to the underlying connective tissue. So this is all dermis down here underneath the basement membrane. So what we're doing is looking at this first single layer of cells that are attached to the basement membrane. That is known as the stratum basal. So it's the deepest layer. It's composed of a single row of cells, whereas some of these other strata have multiple cell layers. Stratum basal is a single layer of cells. They're typically kind of cuboidal or columnar, um, and as they get pushed up through the other layers, they begin to flatten. So this is a true squamous epithelium, but that's based on the fact that these superficial cells are flat. So this epidermis actually grows from the stratum basal. Every single cell in these outer layers originally came from the stratum basal, and as they divided through mitosis, they were pushed up through the different layers. Eventually, we're going to see that they die, and then as they get pushed up, they will eventually flake off or slough off of the outer stratum corneum. So the stratum basal is the deepest layer, single layer of cells. What it's known for is having a lot of stem cells that can become keratinocytes and possibly other cells. So these cells are dividing very rapidly compared to the other layers. So that's what it's known for. It's known for rapid cell division. Okay? More mitosis occurs here than in the other layers. The answer to why is because they are really happy, because they are very close to blood supply. So these little guys here are blood vessels that contain oxygen and nutrients. So the closer you are to these tiny blood vessels in the dermis, the happier you are, and the happier you are, the more you divide. So we can see this cell here is actually undergoing mitosis. So these cells divide fairly quickly. Most of them are going to become keratinocytes, which we'll talk more about those cells, but those are what primarily forms the epidermis, are keratinocytes. You'll also notice there's an occasional melanocyte, which produces melanin, which is the pigment in your skin. There could be a tactile cell, which helps in your sense of touch, and it's attached to a sensory neuron. But most of these cells are keratinocytes. As they divide, they get pushed up into the next layer, which is known as the stratum spinosum. This is a multiple cell layer. Uh, it, it suggests here that there's at least 8 to 10 rows of cells, mostly keratinocytes. These keratinocytes are now going to produce large amounts of keratin. Uh, keratin is that protein that helps uh, strengthen the epidermis. Uh, it also is going to help waterproof 
uh, the epidermis. The, this layer spinosum comes from the fact that you can see little spines in between the cells. So these little spines stick off of the, the keratinocytes. So that's how they got the name uh, stratum spinosum. You'll find an occasional immune cell. This cell here, as you notice, looks a little different. Well, it's an intraepidermal macrophage. Intraepidermal just means it's inside the epidermis. It's a macrophage. Uh, so it can actually phagocytose uh, any pathogens that might be trying to penetrate through the skin. The next layer is called the stratum granulosum. This is another multiple cell layer. It's typically not as thick as the spinosum, maybe just three to five rows of cells. The cells, the keratinocytes, are beginning to flatten a bit. Uh, they're getting pushed pretty far away from blood supply by now. So the cells are starting to die. This is what we call the dying layer. Um, they don't get enough nutrients. They don't get enough oxygen from the blood. Uh, so they begin to die. We start to see their organelles begin to kind of degenerate and go away. Uh, they're still very protective to your overall skin. Uh, it's still, they still have a lot of keratin. They also have these other granules, these little clumps of material that contain a lot of waterproofing lipids. And that typically gives that layer a little bit of a darker color. So it's a little bit of a dark layer. But it's called the granulosum because it has these little granules, which are these little com uh, compartments of lipids inside of the cells. Once these cells get further pushed, they die. They'll completely die once they get past the granulosum. The next layer is called the stratum lucidum. And one major thing about this layer is it's not found everywhere. It's only found in the fingertips, palms, and soles of the feet. Everywhere else you have four layers of the epidermis. Uh, but in your fingertips, palms, and soles, you have this additional stratum lucidum. The cells are completely dead. Uh, they've lost a lot of their organelles, so they look very clear. And that's where they got the word lucidum. Lucid means clear. So the cells, uh, four to six rows, but they're very flat. So the overall layer isn't very thick. Uh, the cells are clear. They're dead. Uh, but they do offer uh, quite a bit of protection. The final layer, the more superficial layer found throughout the body, is called the stratum corneum. And this is the most variable sub-layer of the epidermis. So if you have thick skin, like in the palms of your hand and soles of your feet, the reason why that skin is thick is because there's a thicker stratum corneum. There might be 50 layers of cells. Uh, thin skin might just have a few layers of cells. But it all depends on how much it needs to protect. The skin on your eyelid doesn't need much protection. Uh, you don't use your eyelids to pick things up. Uh, you use your hands to pick things up. And you're standing on your feet. So those layers, because of the increased amount of friction and, and use of those areas of the skin, are going to have more uh, layers in the stratum corneum. Stratum corneum, of course, is still dead. The cells are completely dead. They're going to flake off because they're going to get replaced with underlying cells. And this whole prog pro progression through the strata of the epidermis might take two to three weeks. So this cell here will eventually become this cell here in two or three weeks. And then that cell will, will slough off. So those are the layers of the epidermis. Uh, we should know each layer, what it's known for. We should know the order of the layer. Um, and we should know some of these different cell types that are in the epidermis. And that's what this shows. It just shows some of these cell types that we mentioned previously. The keratinocyte being about 90% of your epidermis are made up of keratinocytes. There's going to be a few melanocytes which are producing melanin, which is the pigmentation in your skin. Uh, this pigmentation helps prevent UV damage uh, to the cells. 
what's interesting is the melanocytes will exocytose the melanin. So the melanin gets produced and then kind of spit out from the cells. Then in order to protect themselves, the keratinocytes will go and endocytose melanin. This way you can protect all the cells. If 90% of the epidermis is keratinocytes, you want to protect all those cells from UV light. But keratinocytes don't know how to produce melanin. So the melanocytes have to kind of donate their melanin over to the keratinocyte. Uh, this is just the drawing of that macrophage. Uh, it's also known as a Langerhans cell. And then this would be that tactile cell, which is part of your, your sense of touch. A couple conditions of the skin related to melanin production. Albinism is a genetic or congenital disorder. Uh, it's, it's due to the complete loss of melanin production. Uh, and the p complete loss occurs everywhere. Your skin lacks melanin, hair lacks melanin, uh, the, the iris of the eyes are non-pigmented and appear red from the blood found in the, the eyes. Um, and so the key here is that there's absolutely no melanin production. The melanocytes are actually there. Uh, they just have a, a genetic defect. Vitiligo is a little bit different. This is the loss of melanocytes, and it occurs in patches. So it's not everywhere. It only happens in certain regions of the skin. Uh, we're not quite sure what causes this. Um, it's, it's believed now to be more of an autoimmune uh, disorder, uh, as well as some genetic uh, factors at play. Um, but the melanocytes are actually destroyed in these patches of the skin. The next video, we're going to start talking about the dermis, which lies beneath the epidermis.